Hey everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, and today we are going to be doing a video that has been long in the making, uh, and this is a tier list, probably the longest fantasy tier list that have ever existed, um, of every single fantasy book that I've ever read. Uh, and so I started really getting into fantasy um, like two and a half, or like three years ago or so, um, and some sci-fi, and some other books, but I'm only going to be uh, tier ranking the sci-fi and fantasy here, but it's a, a vast majority of fantasy. And uh, and yeah, so I've been reading it pretty religiously, and I want to just go through a ranking of every single one. So uh, I'm going to try to do this in one take, uh, so it's probably going to be a little while, and we'll see how good my memory is uh, on some of these longer series, if I can differentiate the different books here. I think I can do it. Um, but yeah, this has been long in the making uh, because it's I can't tell you how long it's taken to download every single one of these titles and then get them all in the correct order. Uh, so if you'll notice, all of these are going to be, I think, uh, in order by series title um, or if standalone books, it's the standalone title. But they should all be in relatively uh, order, although I think some of them are like batched by author. We'll see what we got here. I'm going to try to put timestamps at the bottom and... <laughs> if I have enough time for it. Uh, quite frankly, like doing this video is probably gonna be the easiest part of this whole thing. So uh, before we get into it, let me tell you what these rankings mean. So S is a five-star book, um, the cream of the crop. And there's gonna be a lot there because I think I read a lot of books that I love. And A is gonna be uh, like a four or four and a half stars. Uh, B, three, three and a half. Uh, C, two, two and a half. And D, below that. Um, and so let's get going here uh, before I'm here all night. Uh, and starting with American Gods, and that's easy. This is going to go in the D tier. Um, American Gods is by Neil Gaiman, and, and yeah, I just didn't like it. Uh, I'm just not a Gaiman fan. I've tried a couple books now. Um, I forgot the other one that I read, it, like the really popular one. What is it? Whatever. I'll, we'll get to it later. Uh, but I just, I've just never really been a big fan. I think uh, it's the one with Pratchett, or maybe this one's Pratchett. I don't know. I'm already getting all over the place. Uh, let's get to one that I really like, and this is going to be A Game of Thrones. This is going to be in the S tier. This is uh, part of A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. Uh, and this uh, book I actually read uh, a long time ago for my first time. I probably read this, what, like a decade ago now or so? Maybe eight years? And whenever like the show came out, I read it right when the show came out. And, and it got me just in love with the genre. Uh, I read some of the genre when I was younger, uh, but this really kickstarted my reading. And then I got into kind of a lull after I read it a few times back to back um, and got into some other stuff. But yeah, this really, I, I think, very fondly on the series and A Game of Thrones is where it started. Um, then A Clash of Kings uh, is also going to be an S tier, and I'm going to put that a little bit above uh, A Game of Thrones. I just, you know, I love intro books to series, but I also love... Uh, a lot when I, everything's already established and we can just kind of move on with the plot and uh, and we don't really need any of that intro to be going on anymore. Um, then moving on to the next one, A Storm of Swords is going to be uh, above that. I think A Storm of Swords to this day is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. It's just wonderful in so many ways. If you've read it or you've watched, I don't remember what season it is, like the third or fourth season of the show, you know what I'm talking about. There was just major event after major event, huge reveals, uh, just awesome stuff all around. Um, then A Feast for Crows, I'm going to put this down in the A category. I'm going to be rereading these books. I don't know when I'm going to get around to it. Maybe in 2024, maybe after that. Um, but I can I imagine, I think about this so positively now. I, I think I ranked it, um, I, I think of it right now as like a step below the other three. But I also had this mindset when I read it that, you know, I hadn't read a lot of fantasy and it clearly was a step below. But now that I think about it, you know, I could see it getting into that S tier because even though it's lower than those, I mean, these guys, these three are kind of top of the top of the fives. Maybe this one will be like kind of lower in the fives. We'll see. Um, and then A Dance with Dragons. I'm also going to put it in the A's um, for a similar reason. I'm going to put it ahead of A Feast for Crows. Um, you know, it had a lot of faults. It kind of got a little too sprawling, um, a little meandering, and kind of got itself pigeonholed into some other areas of the world. And I don't think George really knew how to get himself out of it, but I still loved it. It was a good read. Um, then going to Babel, this is by R.F. Kuang, and this is just okay. Um, it's a B. It's probably going to move down on the Bs, kind of almost borderline C. It was just okay. I mean, I like the themes in it. Um, I think some of the characters were okay. I didn't love the plot. 
I think it had a lot of randomness to it. And it kind of was just like kind of hitting you over the head with the plot over and over and over. I mean, I said I like the themes initially, uh, but then it just kind of slams you with them. It, like you're too dumb to figure out what the author is trying to tell you. And I don't I don't need that in my books. Um, then Kings of the Wild. Um, I'm going to probably put this one right about here. I love this. This is by Nicholas Eames. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, this is part of the band, and this is just this awesome, uh, like, classic rock and roll theme to it. Just, I, when I think of, like, a fun fantasy book, uh, this is what I constantly point to. And I've recommended this book to a ton of people. Um, the follow-up to that is Bloody Rose, and it's, it follows a different protagonist, um, kind of like the, you know, years later. And I'm going to put this below A Game of Thrones. Liked it a lot. Not quite as good as the first one. This is like... So if um, Kings of the Wild was 70s rock, Bloody Rose is 80s rock. Uh, I keep saying rock, but there's like so many like themes in it and like references to classic rock in these and 80s rock. It's good stuff. Um, and yeah, an awesome female protagonist in that one. Um, then Black Sun. I actually DNF'd this because I hated it. And I'm going to put this below American Gods. Maybe I would have ended up liking it. But I just, it felt so convoluted. I really didn't get very far into it uh, before I stopped reading it. I don't even think I did a review of it. I didn't read enough of it. I just didn't feel captivated. And I don't, I, there's so many hundreds of more books that I haven't read that I want to. That why am I wasting time reading that one? Um, then Port of Shadows. This is technically... In a chronological order, uh, the first one in The Black Company, although not a ton of people have read it, came out way later than the other Black Company books, um, but it is set before all of the other books. And I hated it, and I love The Black Company, but it's it's horrific. Um, and I'm actually going to put it below Black Sun. I read more of this one before I DNF'd it. Um, but while I was bored by Black Sun, I hated Port of Shadows. It just, the writing was horrible. I don't know what happened to Glenn Cook, but he lost it in this one. Um, and then moving to the, what we traditionally think of as the first Black Company book, um, The Black Company. And I'm going to put this up here in the S's. I loved it. It's I, I think it's my favorite Black Company book. Um, and that's sad to say because it's a long series and you never want the first book to be the best one. But it's really, really, really good. Um, it's like this darker fantasy story that follows these mercenaries that don't care about good or evil. In fact, they're working for evil people at the beginning of this and they don't care. Um, it's a cool concept, l very enjoyable. Um, you know, it's it, it's wonderful writing, and I, I can't believe that the same guy wrote Port of Shadows and The Black Company. Um, then Shadows Linger, this is uh, the next one, and this got a significant decrease. I'm going to put this in the B category. Um, I told him it's a very different book where in, where The Black Company, these characters are kind of traveling around. Um, where in Shadows Linger, they're taking place in like one location, trying to solve this mystery. And while I enjoyed the mystery, it also followed this other protagonist that was not, you know, one of the group. And it's like half the story is following this, like, I think he's like a barkeeper. Um, and the drama he gets into by murdering somebody and then like getting in deep in it. And I, I didn't like that part of the story. And it kind of brought me out of, of the rest of it. And then The White Rose. The White Rose, I'm going to give it a A. It's a very good book. I love the ending of this little trilogy. Um, the books are kind of split up into like sets. Um, and and the, I think you could kind of claim this one, the first one's like a trilogy. It's really good. It brought the series back. And I love the ending. Um, and it's just good stuff. And we follow the same analyst. I'm going to use that word here in the next couple minutes. Um, because the book is written in this form where it's like a diary, where you have somebody in this military band, this this mercenary company, who's detailing the events of what are going on for future generations to be able to look look back on. Um, and the analyst switches throughout. And I think this is maybe the last one, maybe not, of who the analyst is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Then Shadow Games. I loved Shadow Games. I'm going to move it up here just below the Black Company. Um, but it, it'll get more spread as we go along through this. Um, this is the start to what I think of as the real story here to the Black Company. The first trilogy told this cool little story. But then the greater story actually begins here. Um, where they're trying to find their roots and where they came from. Because they lost the a lot of the diaries from before and they're trying to figure it out and and that's where it really happens um then 
We're going to go to Dreams of Steel. This one shifts the perspective to this woman called The Lady. Um, she's this really evil person at the beginning of the story. I don't want to say anything more to spoil anything, but I love the shift. Um, it, you know, I, while I loved the, the initial analyst, and I think I liked him more um, than I do The Lady, I love how the skill that was used by Glenn Cook to be able to pull it off to shift, totally shift the perspective here. Um, then the silver spike, um, and I'm going to move this down into the bees, um, probably right about here. It's this weird kind of like mystery story that kind of shoots off to talk about these different characters. It feels, it's probably the most different of all of the Black Company books besides that first horrible one, Port of Shadows. But it's like a weird mystery story that feels out of place. Um, it's enjoyable, but just not quite like the other ones. Uh, then Bleak Seasons, I'm going to move this up into the S's, um, probably below Bloody Rose. Enjoyed it a lot. The switch the analyst to this guy, Mergen. Um, and a very different tone, love the shift, it's good stuff. Um, and then She is the Darkness, I'm going to move this one right up here. I love, love, love books that involve a siege, and that is what this one is all about. And it was just extremely well done. Um, then Water Sleeps, um, and the analyst switches once again uh, to this guy Sleepy. And I'm probably going to move it down below these two. Um, this is probably my least favorite analyst. Uh, but I always love the switches, and uh, this one's no exception. And then Soldiers Live. And where do I put you? Probably right about here. It ended the story. Eh, probably here. I, I, I love good endings, and this ending was very well done. Um, then moving over to a black t uh, the, the Black Tongue Thief. Um, this is in the Black Tongue series. This is the only book out in the series thus far. I am forgetting the author at this point. I'm probably going to do that a lot here. Um, it's going to go in the A's, but probably near the bottom. Um, I loved the first half of the story. Did not love the second half, but the first half was so good um, that I'm going to keep it in the A's. Just a, a really good story about this thief who uh, has to end up getting sucked into this grand adventure. Um, and it's a really good time. Um, then Red Sister. I am going to put this kind of towards the bottom of the B's. Um... Kind of the opposite of the Black Tongue Thief. I did not love uh, the first kind of like two thirds of Red Sister. I thought the ending really rescued it. Um, it was really good stuff. This is by Mark Lawrence. Uh, I've, I've never read a Mark Lawrence book that I've given, um, I think, above a B. Maybe I gave one of them. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I want to like Mark Lawrence way more than I do. Don't really know my problem with them, but you know, you can't vibe with every author. Uh, then we're moving to The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. The first is Senlet Ascends. I'm going to give Senlet Ascends an A. It's a fun story about this guy who gets um, has to try to find his, his, his wife, who he just got married to. Uh, she disappears when they go on vacation to this giant tower, the world's most magnificent magical tower. Um, and he has to work his way up the tower trying to find his wife. Um, and each floor is very different than the other one. It's kind of set in this kind of episodic kind of book. Very Every kind of set of the book, I think there's three floors in this, is very different than the others. Just kind of, uh, you know, captured my imagination. It was very good. Um, and you'd think the next one followed the same theme, but it did not. Um, Arm of the Sphinx, I, it just kind of got, the story kind of got away from itself, from what I wanted. Um, the characters kind of got stuck where they're at, got kind of boring. I wanted things to kind of move at a quicker pace, and they just didn't do it. Um, and I'm going to then say the Hod King is definitely a C, but below the other one. I just didn't really like much about it at all, and it made me not want to finish the series, even though there's only one other book in the series. Uh, the I don't know the name of it. I should know, but I don't. Um, and I should have finished it. But why do I want to keep reading books that I know I'm not going to enjoy? Then The Cloud Roads. This is part of the Books of Raksura. I think this is by Martha Wells, uh, the author of the Murderbot Diaries. Um, I liked this. I did not love it. I'm going to move it right here. Um, this was a, a book that one of my patrons selected for me to read. Uh, I do a raffle every month, and this one won. And I don't love Martha Wells, um, but I did I did enjoy this. Uh, it's an interesting kind of coming-of-age story where there's no humans in the story. They're all like these flying beasts. Um, and this one finds out that he's actually something different than he thought he was. He's trying to find himself all while going through this epic adventure. Uh, it's a longer series. I don't think I'm going to read it. Um, but I did, you know, enjoy the first one. 
Then we are going to The Bound and the Broken. The first is Of Blood and Fire. This is by Ryan Cahill. And I read this this year. And I liked the first one quite a bit. Um, didn't love it. Very tropey. Just feels like I've read the same kind of book a hundred times. Um, but it did it well. Then next is The Fall. And The Fall is a novella that I liked. And I'm going to move it here. Uh, it was a very good novella. And wait. No. You're going in the A's. I got in the wrong category here. But towards the bottom of the A's. I don't love novellas normally. Uh, but this one was well done. As I look back on it, I like it more than when I read it. Because I just read, I just finished up reading the next book in the series that I'll just go ahead and talk about now. Of Darkness and Light. Which is one of the best books I've ever read. I'm going to move it up here. I love it. Oh, man, I love it. Go watch my review. I just, it's like the last video I put out before this one. Um, it's amazing. And it improves on the first one in every way. But the novella, now that I finished this book, it's a lot more impactful. And if you've read these books, you know what I'm talking about. It makes a lot more sense to me now. And I think I would enjoy the novella a lot more. In fact, I'm pretty, I guarantee I'm going to read it at some point. Um, then the fifth season. Um, the fifth season, I, I hated. And... Not as much as Port of Shadows, though, but I did hate it. And in part, I hate how hyped up this series is. You know, I, I didn't like it, but it's like so notoriously incredible, according to almost everybody who's read this. And I just don't know that we read the same book. Um, then Prince of Thorns. Um, Prince of Thorns, I'm going to put uh, towards the top of the bees. I did enjoy Prince of Thorns. I had a lot of problems with it. I loved the ending. Um, I thought the writing was pretty good. Um, and this is again, this is my Mark Lawrence, probably my favorite Mark Lawrence book. In fact, it is. Sorry, I gotta drink some water here. And, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, the guy is like a sociopath. I don't know if he technically is, but he's a maniac, which I don't love at a protagonist. I didn't love the protagonist, but the story was well done. Um, and then King of Thorns, I did not really enjoy. I'm going to put this below Red Sister. And, and the plot just got away from itself again. Uh, it did this weird timeline jumping. I did not like that. Uh, I was very bored through a lot of it, very confused through a lot of it because of needlessly convoluted things that, part of it. And I just didn't enjoy it very much. Uh, then Rage of Dragons. I'm putting this in the S category, but uh, probably right about here. It's good. It's by this guy, Evan Winter. It involves a... It has a lot of African themes to it. Everybody is black in the story. Um, it's got these kind of tribal aspects to it. It's got a school setting involved in it. It's got a redemption arc. It's got a tournament. All of these things I love about stories. The writing's not incredible, but the story is very good. Um, and then this is followed up by The Fires of Vengeance. Um, I didn't like it as much. I did like it. Quite a bit. It's a fun story. Um, and I'm going to move it right about here. It's good stuff. Then we have a lot of cradle books. And I'm going to do my best, this is by Will White, to try to remember the differences between all these books. Because I read a lot of them really back to back to back to back. Um, and we're going to do our best. But I love this series. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I did not really enjoy the last two books, which really leaves a sour taste to my mouth. But I'm thinking now about how much I loved these first set of books. Um, starting with the first one, Unsold. I'm going to put Unsold at the top of the Bs. Um, it's good stuff. Good, good intro. Loved the ending. Um, I loved the direction it took, and it just sold this promise of what the series was going to be and really wowed me when I read it. Um, then Soulsmith, I'm going to put um, near the bottom of the A's. I really enjoyed it. Um, this is where the real story really begins. You start to get this progression aspect of the story, um, and we, you know, get to love the characters a little bit more. Um, then we've got, what is this, Black Flame. This story starts to just get more epic. I'm going to put this at the bottom of the S's. I loved it when I read it. Um, and yeah, just things are getting big and epic, and it's awesome. And Skysworn does the same thing. I'm going to put Skysworn right above it. It just continues everything that I loved about it and then added a little bit more. Um, Ghost Water, I'm going to move down right about here. I, I had a lot of problems with Ghost Water, even though most people love, love, love it. Um, a lot of people have this as one of their favorite of the Cradle books. Um, I just didn't love the really tight story that it had here. Um, I was wanting the story to become bigger and more epic and, uh, and spanning lots of different areas. It really tightened up and did like one little spot, one really tight story. It was good, but not great. 
Uh, then we have Underlord. This is where they're really prepping for this big tournament that happens. I'm going to move it right about here. Um, I love tournament settings, um, and I and that's why I loved Uncrowned as probably my favorite of the group. I'm going to move it probably up here. I loved it. It was a, a great tournament story. The whole book is really involving a tournament, and it's awesome stuff. Um, and then Winter Steel, we continued the tournament, but it's towards the end of it. Um, didn't love some of the plot towards the second half of the book. I'm going to move it to the A's, and I'm just going to randomly put it right about here. Um, then Bloodline um, is wonderful. It's, I think, better than um, than whatever this one was. Uh, is that Uncrowned that I have there? And and yeah, it's I can't really say why it's more epic, because you might read this, but needless to say, it is. And then Reaper, my favorite of the group. Uh, I loved it, everything about it, um, especially one big thing that happens, and I don't want to tell you more than that, but if you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. And then things go downhill. We have Dread Gauze that I'm going to put in the Bs. I didn't love it. It just was a lot of training montages and not where I wanted the story to go. And sadly, we then have Waybound that I'm going to put in the Cs. And this is the final book of the series, and that's horrible. That The last book in the series, I felt like was the worst book. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, then, with from Max Gladstone, we have Three Parts Dead. This is another Patreon pick. I did not enjoy this. I'm going to move it to the top of the Ds. I just never really vibed with it. <laughs> I don't normally love like urban settings to my stories, which this one is. Although I do love some urban settings. You're going to see some in the S's by the end of this uh, list. Just never really vibed with it. Then the Grace of Kings. The Grace of Kings is amazing. And I'm going to put it up here. Currently the top leader. This is by Ken Liu. Um, this is part of the Dandelion Dynasty, one of my favorite series of all time. I am going to be finishing the last book in the Dandelion Dynasty here in September, and I cannot wait. Um, just it, it, it's, it's one of those books that's almost perfection to me. I say almost perfection. Because I think Wall of Storms is better. And just incredible. Very different book. Very different book. Almost made the first book feel like a prologue. Um, that's how good it was. Um, and then we have The Veiled Throne. And I'm going to... I loved it. I'm going to move it probably right about here. Just awesome stuff. Is it there? These two could be interchangeable, but I'm going to leave it right there. Just great stuff. Moving on to Orconomics. Orconomics is a comedy book, a satire. I don't remember the author's name, uh, but he very kindly gave me a copy of his follow-up book, uh, the third in the trilogy, um, Dragonfired, I think, or something like that. Um, it's really good, and I'm going to move it right here. <laughs> I laughed a lot. It's one of the funniest books I've ever read. Uh, I wish I could remember the author's name right now, but I just... Wait. J. Zachary Pike? Uh, and then Son of a Lich? I'm going to move in the A's. I liked it a lot. Not quite as good. Um, right there. Now we have two books from... What series is this? The Dark Tower by Stephen King. I'm not a big Stephen King fan. I know a lot of people hate when I say that. The Gunslinger, I'm going to put in the C category. Near the bottom of the C's. It was just not a good book uh, to me. It's rambling. doesn't have a cohesive story. It's just a lot of vibe, and that's not why I read my stories. Um, but it's better than this one, <laughs> The Drawing of the Three. I thought The Drawing of the Three lost all the good things from the first book and inserted them with all the wrong things, and it just reminds me why I don't love Stephen King. Um, then we have 11.22.63. This is a book, again, by Stephen King, so I've lumped up the Stephen Kings here. Uh, as his series, apparently. Uh, and I'm going to put this into the B category. This was a Patreon pick. I had a good time reading this. I didn't love it, though. Uh, I loved the idea of it more than the execution, but the idea is really fun. It's this alternate history where this guy finds out that he can go back in time into the early 1960s, and his mission is to stop JFK from getting assassinated. And he has to try to figure out how to do that. Um, and it's a fun kind of thought experiment. Um, and then The Stand, also by Stephen King. And The Stand is going to be uh, right above it. 
Uh, I wish I loved, I, I thought I was going to love it. And it just, it's too long for me. And like most Stephen King books, the ending was really bad. And for such a long book that had this promise of such an epic ending, um, it meandered too much. And the ending just didn't get stuck. So now we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Discworld. Um, Discworld is... I have a love-hate relationship with Discworld. I love a lot of the books, but I dislike a lot of the books too. Um, but... You know, in general, I feel like I'm just, I, I have a lot of feelings like it's a B series for me, but I love satire and it does it really well. Um, and it's just, there's a lot of variation between my thoughts on all these books. So let me try to fire through these because I'll just spend all day talking about them if I don't. Um, and these are not going to be in the perfect order. I think this is the order that I read them in, which is not exactly the chronological order. Um, but I started with The Color of Magic and The Color of Magic is going to be a B. It's entertaining. <coughs> Sorry. It's entertaining, but um, you could tell it's early work, and it's his first book written, so it makes sense. Uh, then Equal Rights. This is a witch's book. I liked this one more. I'm going to put it right about here. Um, and it just tells a story about this little girl who is trying to be a wizard, but she can't because she's a girl. Uh, a lot of the kind of sexist themes into it, but done in a really, really good way. And then Guards, Guards, perhaps my favorite. Um, it's going to be a top tier S book for me. I'm going to put it right about here. Uh, extremely funny. Um, again, with Organomics, one of the funniest books that I've ever read. But also very smart and entertaining. And I can't wait to forget more about it so I can get back and read it again. Um, then we have Mort. Uh, Mort, I'm going to put kind of in the middle of those. I'm going to move it towards the bottom of the A's. This is a story involving this character, Death. Um, he is a fan favorite. I like Death. I don't love him like some do, um, but he's an entertaining character, and I had a good time with it. Then we have Men at Arms. This is, again, with Guards Guards. It follows this Night's Watch group. I'm going to put it below it, but not very far below it. Um, this book inserts a lot of new characters. There's a lot of new recruits to the watch, and you get a lot of new personalities with these different monsters that want to become these recruits. It's really well done. And then we have Reaper Man. This is a, another death book. Uh, I liked it more than the first death book. I'm going to put it right about here. Um, and it's where death takes a vacation from his job. He goes and becomes a farmer. Uh, and you get to see the consequences of no death in the world for a little while. Um, and then Feet of Clay. This is another S. This is a mystery story with the watch. I think I liked Men, um, Feet of Clay just a little bit less than I liked Men at Arms. Um, fun mystery story. I just love the watch so much, and that's why it's so high. And then we have uh, Small Gods. Small Gods, you know, gun to my head, I'm putting it right below Guards Guards. It's a really fun satire on religion. I had a really fun time reading it, and it's a really good, both of these books are really good intro books into Discworld if you haven't gotten into it yet. Um, then The Light Fantastic, this is where I went back and started doing it in chronological order because this is the second one in the series. I'm going to give this one a B. I thought it was better than the first one, but not a ton better. And I'm going to move it right there. Um, then we have Sorcery. This is a Rincewind book. One of my favorites of the Rincewinds. Oh, now we have to scroll because we have so much. Um, and this is going to be a solid A. I'm going to move it right about there. Um, I can't talk too much about these. i got to go a little faster. This video is going to be forever if I don't. Um, so then we're going to move over to Weird Sisters or Word Sisters, W-I-R-D. This is a play on uh, Shakespeare, and I'm going to move this towards the bottom of the A's. Then Pyramids, which a lot of people think is a horrible book. I liked it. Didn't love it. I'm going to move it to the B's. Above those two, right there. It's like this Egyptian satire. And then Eric, which I did not like a lot. I'm going to move it right here. It's a, uh, you got to read this one and get the printed version. So you get the, it's all like, it's a picture book. So it's like a comic book, really. The pictures are amazing. The story is not. Um, then you get moving pictures. This is a film. This is a book with a satire on the film industry. I'm going to move this into the A's uh, right about there. Um, then we have Witches Abroad. This is a witch's story again. It's kind of a fairy tale theme to it. This is where the witches kind of started to get dull to me. Uh, I'm going to move them right about here. Um, then Lords and Ladies, another witch's book. And maybe it's better, maybe it's not, but I was just kind of getting tired of them and I'm moving it right above Red Sister. 
Um, then Soul Music. Um, didn't love it. It's a play on the music industry, but it's like not modern day music because the book was written a long time ago. It's like older music that I'm not into. And I feel like if you were into that kind of music, you'd like it more. I was not. I'm going right there. Then Interesting Times is a really fun book that's a play on Chinese culture. Um, really enjoyed it. It's got to be above that one. Got to be above that one and moving right there. Um, and then Masquerade. This is a play on the Phantom of the Opera, something that I don't really enjoy. I don't. I did not enjoy this one much at all. I'm moving right there. Then Hogfather, another fan favorite um, that I wish I liked more, but I did like it. It's going to be in the A's. Um, and where should you be? Right about there. Really fun play on Christmas. And I, I probably should read it again around Christmas. I should read it every Christmas. Um, and then Jingo, this... Uh, Really interesting story involving nationalism is the main theme. Um, and let's move it right above pyramids. The Last Continent, a book that I was told sh I should not read because it's not very good. I ended up loving it. It's this uh, satire on Australian culture. Uh, very funny. Uh, one of my... I just love it. And it's really good. It's in the A's. Then The Fifth Elephant. This is where I started to think that... Terry started to not get as good on the humor side of things. It's a city watch book, but just not as funny, um, but still good. And I'm moving in the A's. Just not, I can't, I, 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 I feel badly about this because it's just not like, you know, Guards, Guards and some of the better night watch books. Then Carpe Jungulum. This is a play on vampires. It was just whatever. Uh, moving over right there. Then The Truth. This is a satire on newspapers. Liked it a lot. Going right there. Um, and then Thief of Time. This is another death book, but I, it's probably my favorite death book. And you're going right about there. Um, the Last Hero is another graphic story, kind of like Eric, although this one actually has a good story. Um, and you're going to go to the bottom of the A's. Uh, Night Watch. This is another Night Watch book. They go back in time. I didn't love the going back in time aspect of it we're going there uh the amazing maurice uh this is a kid's book that i had some enjoyment out of but not a lot and we're going down here the we free men another kid's book and this made me realize i just need to stop reading kids books monstrous regiment i love love loved it you're going towards the near lower on the s's but it's just awesome um, I don't even want to tell you what it's about because you'll get spoiled. Uh, and then going postal, this fun play on the postal service, and I loved it. And you're going up here. Thud, another fun night watch books where it started to move a little downhill from that point. We're going in the A's. Making Money, another A book, probably right up there with the Making Money. Uh, almost done. Unseen Academicals, a play on soccer. I love soccer. Didn't love this one. It was good, not great. You're in the Bs. Then the last Discworld I, book I read, because Terry really started to lose it. I think he had dementia at this point, and you could tell. Um, and so I just didn't want to read any more. That's going to make me sad about him and the decrease in quality. And we're going to move down here into the Bs. And that makes us done with Discworld. Um, all right. Let's move to City of Stairs. Um, this is in the Divine Cities by Robert Jackson Bennett. I um, don't know why I read this. Somebody recommended it to me and they led me astray. And we're in the seas. Then we have a few books in the Jornai Saga by David Gemmel. Um, starting with Legend, the one everybody talks about. I think it was wonderfully done. I'm moving into the middle of the A's. It's really fun. Old school fantasy story. Almost not even fantasy. It's almost like a historical fiction. There's some magical elements, especially towards the end. But it's just a fun story about a siege, and you know my thoughts about sieges. Uh, then The King Beyond the Gate. If I never read uh, Legend, I'd like this one more, but it's kind of just like a carbon copy of it. But not as good. So you're going to the middle of the B's. And then Waylander, again. It feels like we're reading the same story in essence, over and over and over again. And that means you're getting down here. All right. Now we have a lot of Dresden File books. I've been very critical of the Dresden Files, and people don't like when I say that. However, 
I did like a lot of these books. It's just on reflection, I didn't like how sexist Terry was. And eventually it just made me say, I need to stop reading these books. Um, and I'm just not, I'm liking them, not loving them. And I don't know why so many people think they're, you know, incredible. Um, and starting with Stormfront, I thought Stormfront was really bad. Um, I, 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 I'm surprised I kept reading. It was so bad. And that I knew everyone tells me the first one's horrible. So I kept it up and I'm glad I did because I thought Full Moon, which people also say is horrible, um, was like a bottom of the bees. Um, and the other one that people say is horrible is Grave Peril, but I thought it was better than Full Moon just by a little bit. Um, then we get to Summer Night. This is where the plot really starts to take hold. This is where a lot of people tell you to start the series. I agree. It's better. Not great. You're on lower on the bees. Then we have Death Mask. This involves the Red Court of Vampires. I feel like the series just kind of kept getting better and better. And another B. And then they got and then Blood Rights. I loved this. This was about the film industry. Um, not a satire, kind of like uh, like talking about Discworld. Um, but this is where the plot I thought started to really become its own thing and special, and I liked it. And it gets to or it's the bottom of the A's. Um, then Deadbeat, this is the one with uh, the word of Kemmler and randomly a T-Rex in it, which was really fun. And each of these books is just getting better and better at this point. Um, and then Proven Guilty, I don't even remember. I feel like this is an investigation involving Molly. I know it's an A, but where we're going to get us there. And then White Knight, this is where the series kind of started to go backwards for me. I thought it was in the Bs. Most people say these books are getting better and better, but I felt like it kind of plateaued. Maybe it's my fault because I read all these kind of back-to-back-to-back to back to back and I just kind of got sick of them. Um, so it might just be a me thing. Um, and then Small Favor, um, it bounced back. You know, I feel like this is an A, but not a very high one. Uh, and then Turncoat, I thought was a B. This involves uh, uh, this guy, Warden Morgan, and his treason, trying to solve that problem. You're in the Bs. Then Changes, everyone's favorite um, Jim Butcher book. I didn't love it. Um, and we're going to go to the top of the seas and it made me go, look, if this is everybody's favorite and I'm supposed to be loving it at this point and I'm not, then I'm out. And I was out. Then we got a couple books from the Dungeon Crawler Carl series by Matt Dinneman. This is a series that I read recently on audiobook. I loved the first one. I thought it was awesome. It's clearly in the asses. Um, and how do I get up there? There we go. A uh, really fun book. It I had no right to be as fun as it was. And we're going to move you right above Reaper. Um, and then the next book in that series, Carl's Doomsday Scenario. I thought it was good, not great. Um, you're in the middle of the S's. Um, and I'm hoping that series kind of bounced back with the third one, which I'll be reading sometime soon. Um, then we have um, Empire of the Vampire, the only book in the series out thus far by Jay Kristoff. I think that's his name. I'm trying to remember. I feel like my memory is doing pretty good here. We'll see if the night goes on. Um, and I loved it. This is an S. I loved the voice in the story. It made me rethink my how much what I think about vampire stories. Uh, I didn't really think I'd like them, but I loved, loved, loved that one. Then we've got um, Empire of the Wolf uh, by by somebody um, and uh, Richard Swan. And the first is Justice of the Kings, and I loved it. This is an S. Um, way or in the S's, probably above Dungeon Crawler Carl, but not a lot. Followed up by The Tyranny of Faith, which I thought was better than it, but not a ton. And it's going right there. Just an awesome series about this traveling judge uh, in this kind of medieval kind of setting. Then he's got magic. The story is getting really expansive, talking about the downfall of this empire. Um, and it's awesome. All right. I think we're at our first sci-fi book. Um, and I read three books from the Expanse series um, by James S.A. Corey, which is not a person. It's a combination of two different names. It's uh, two different authors that combined. I have no idea what the real names are. Uh, the first is Leviathan Wakes. I liked it. It's in the A's. Right about there. I thought the next one was a little bit worse towards the bottom of the A's. Um, that one is called Caliban's War. And I thought the next one was Abaddon's Gate. And I put this kind of in the middle of the bees. And this is where I stopped. Um, it's not the trajectory that I want my stories to go and my enjoyment. I'll probably end up reading it again someday. But looking at this, I think, a 10 or 11 book series and me kind of waning my interest in them just made me not want to continue. 
Then we've got a bunch of books that I love um, because we have John Gwen books, one of my favorite authors, um, starting with Malice from Faithful and the Fallen. Malice gets an S grade. Um, awesome traditional style fantasy. Um, I'm going to move it right about there. And then we have Valor, which is the next in the series. And it just kind of continues that story, but is even better. Moving it right there. Ruin, which continues to get better. And I think I liked, I loved it. Um, it you're probably going to go up here, right kind of below Tyranny of Faith. And then Wrath, which I thought was the best of the group. And is really one of my favorite books. Um, and it's probably going to go right up here. Okay. Um, then he did another, so he did four books in The Faithful and the Fallen, and then he did a trilogy called Of Blood and Bone, which is set like 150 years later in the same world. Um, I did not like them as much, but I like them a lot. The first one is probably my least favorite of this whole group of seven books. It goes in the A's. It really came together towards the end, but it took a long time to get there. Um, then we have A Time of Blood, which I think is really good, but not, you know, quite up there with Malice. It's a little bit below it. And then we have A Time of Courage, which I thought was even better and probably, you know, right up there around with Valor. Shadow of the Gods is another S tier. Uh, this is a new series by his. This is the series he's currently working on. He only has one more book in the series to go in the trilogy. I thought it was awesome. And it's probably right kind of mid of the pack of the S's. Then Hunger of the Gods, which I liked even more than Shadow of the Gods. I don't think that's a popular opinion. Uh, but you're going to be right about there. Okay. Ooh, yes. Another author that I am obsessed with. And this is Joe Abercrombie with the First Lost series. Uh, man, I'm rereading these now. And it's just making me remember how much I truly love them. Um, and starting with The Blade Itself. The Blade Itself is wonderful right around the Tyranny of Faith. And this is one of my least favorite First Law books. Uh... Before They Are Hanged, I think it's better than that. And it's got to be right up here around Kings of the Wild. Uh, Last Argument of Kings is top, 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 top tier. Right around there. Um, then we have three books that are standalones. So that first one was a trilogy. Um, then we have three standalones, which I thought were good, not great. Um, I'm putting Best Serve Cold is a good A. I'm putting the heroes lower, although on a reread, I think I'll like it more, but I'm going to put lower on the A's. And then Red Country, I'm going to put right next to the heroes. Um, then the final trilogy, I thought was even better than the first trilogy. And in general, better. So, like, I think a little hatred I'll have, like, right about here. And then the Trouble of Peace, I thought was a little bit better. Not much, but right there. And then Wizard of Crown is even better than that, but not quite as good as Last Armament of Kings. I'd say right about here. They're just all top tier. Um, and we're done with Joe Abercrombie. Now we have three books by Brian Lee Durfee, and I'm really high on the series. I think over time I'm, I'm getting lower on the series as I'm kind of reading more, but I love it. Um, I love Brandley Durfee. I love these books. Um, I think they're all better than the one preceding it. And they're all, all S's. So The Forgetting Moon, let's think about where you're at. Forgetting Moon's got to be right around Dungeon Crawler Carl. And then we have The Blackest Heart, which I think is even better. It's got to be right around here. And then The Lonesome Crown is really, 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 really high. Probably right around The Wisdom of Crowds. Just very underrated series. Then we have the Forsaken Trilogy. It just came out uh, by R.J. Barker. And it's an S. Lower on the S's, but still an S. Good stuff. Cool. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, kind of jungly vibe to it with all these old gods. Fun stuff. And then Foundry Side. This is part of the Founders Trilogy, trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. Uh, this was another Patreon pick. I liked it a lot. It's in the S's. I will probably keep reading the series, but it, it's going to be a little while until I get there. Um, felt very similar to like a Brandon Sanderson book, but not quite to that quality. And we have a lot to go. Let's get going. 
All right. The Lies of Locke Lamora. This is a book in the Gentle and Bastard series by Scott Lynch. I am... This is one of my favorite books. Uh, I just got done rereading it. And you're going to be right up here, somewhere around here. Uh, then Red Seas Under Red Skies. I am reading it now. And I don't know what I'm going to rate it. I just started it for my reread. When I first read it, I had it in the A's. But I'm going to put it at the very top of the A's. Um, then... Republic of Thieves, I'm going to put at the top of the B's, although I'm probably going to upgrade it at least to the A's when I do my reread soon, but we'll see. Um, then we have a book, In the Shadow of Lightning, by Brian McClellan. This is the author of The Powder Mage, and he only has one book in the series, The Glass of Mortals. I thought it's an A, not a high A. Probably around Carl's Doomsday Scenario. Then the Goblin Emperor. This Look, we're so top-heavy. Time to bring it down a little bit. I thought this is horrible. 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 <laughs> it's good. Probably second to the bottom. I just I can't get what people like about this. It's just a bore. Um, and then Good Omens. This is a the book I was thinking about by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Um, I talked about this at the very beginning of this uh, video when I talked about American Gods. It was a B, but like bottom of the Bs. All right. <clears throat> Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. Uh, all three of these are going to be S's. Jade City, the worst of the bunch. But I loved it. It's probably all right about there. And then these two, I feel like, are the exact same. Jade War and Jade Legacy. They're going to be high, but not crazy high. I'm going to move it right around Small Gods. And then I just read, after that, um, this little novella collection called Jade Shards. It was okay. It's a B. Um, enjoyable. Some of the stories. Some of them not so much. It deserves right about there. Then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea. Um, this is a book by T.J. Clune that I thought I would hate. People told me I'd hate it, but I thought it was delightful. Um, it's gonna go near the bottom of the S's. Just a nice, cute story. And I normally don't like that kind of stuff, but for some reason I liked it. Then Hyperion, part of Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons, I think is his name. Could be wrong about that. Um, and this is gonna be in the B's. It was good, but not great. All right, now we have three books in the Jekua series, a series you've probably never heard of unless you watch my videos. This is a series by Travis Riddle, um, very underrated series that almost nobody's read. Um, it's like a Pokemon-inspired world, just fun stuff. Uh, the first book I'm gonna put kind of uh, near the bottom of the A's. Uh, the second book I'm gonna put right next to it, I think a little bit better, eh, quite a bit better. And then the last one I did not really enjoy. Took a big step back, but we're going to go to the top of the seas. Um, all right. Now we have two books from the King Killer Chronicle we have by Patrick Rothfuss. Very well-known series. The Name of the Wind, I'm going to put in the S's. Um, where? I loved it. Right about there. And then I reread The Wise Man's Fear recently. And contrary to what I thought and what I originally thought, I liked it a little bit more than The Name of the Wind. And I'm going to move it right up here next to Ruin. It was just a really fun book. Um, okay. Now, The Captain. This is part of the Last Horizon series. This is um, by Will White. I thought this was delightful. And I honestly thought it was better than Reaper, the best book in Cradle. Um, and it, it's just, it's so fun. I'm going to go, you're going to hug a spot right next to the name of the wind. Legends and Lattes, um, by Travis Baldry. Man, I'm doing good remembering these names. I swear these aren't written down. Uh, another cute little book, fun, better than House of the Cerulean Sea. Really captivated me for a while. I'm going to stop when I don't like a book as much. 
there. Okay. Then we have The Shadow of What Was Lost by someone. Um, this is part of the Lycanius trilogy. The name's on the tip of my tongue, but I, I feel like it starts with an L. No? Maybe I'm wrong? Um, and you're in a bees. It was okay. It, it, you know, it had that thing on where it like felt good, not great. Felt like a blood and fire, but not as not nearly as good. So you're going down here. What is the name of that author? Ugh. Whatever. Whatever. I don't care. Um, I do care. Now we have five books from the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. Um, and series notorious for having a horrible ending, which I agree with. Um, the Black Prism, I thought was a very fun intro into the story. I'm putting you in the A's. Um, right about here. I thought The Blinding Knife was wonderful. And it's the only book in the series that I'm going to put in the S's. I thought The Broken Eye was a decent step down. And it's in the B's. I thought The Blood Mirror was a significant step down and had a twist that I thought was just atrocious. Um, right about there. And then The Burning White, the one everyone says is the worst book in the series. I hated part of the ending, but I thought overall it did decently well and I enjoyed myself. And it's going to go near the bottom of the A's. Okay. Getting in the Night. This is part of the Locked Tomb by Tamsin Mirror. Another one. I cannot figure out what people love about this. It's going to go in the Ds. Where? It's really bad. Right next to fifth season. Now we have The Lord of the Rings. All three of these I'm going to put in A category. Um, I think I'm going to put them like this. I'm going to put... The first one, <coughs> so it's a fun book up here. I know most people would have it top of the S's. I just didn't like it as much. I thought the Two Towers was the best of the group. I'm going to put you right, right about there. It's good stuff. I think that The Return of the King is the worst of the group. And I'm going to put you down here. No, you got. I, I got to be true to myself. It's got to be lower, right about there. Okay, then we have the Lot Lands by Jonathan French. Um, the first book I thought was awesome. This is a book that won the SBFBO award that Mark Lawrence does for um, independent authors. I thought it was an A, but not a high A. Right about there. I thought the next one was really bad. I had to DNF it. I'm gonna put it near the top of the D's. And then I stopped reading the series, obviously. All right. Now we have a little series called Molassin. Got a ton of books in Molassin here to go over. Um, and this is my favorite series I've ever read. So you're going to see a lot of high grades here. Starting with Gardens of the Moon. I'm going to put Gardens of the Moon in the A category. When I first read it, it was right about here. I thought it was really good, really interesting, but I was very confused. Um, and now that I look back on it, I bet I would love it when I do my reread. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my reread in 2024, and I'm sure that I'll think of it as a top tier S. But right now, I don't. Okay, now a lot of S's. Dead House Gates. I'm just going to kind of fly through these. Dead House Gates. Man, I love this series. Got to be right about there. Memories of Ice. One of my favorite books I've ever read. Probably right about here. I mean, it's just awesome. I got to put it up here. Um, House of Chains, the fourth book in the series, another S, the worst to this point, but awesome right there. Midnight Tides, where am I going with you? Right below Dead House Gates, The Bone Hunters, uh, really high, probably right between these two. Reaper's Gale. I, I liked it more than Midnight Tides, but not a lot more. Told the Hounds, the greatest ending to any book I've ever read, but not quite up to those. I'm going right there. Dust of Dreams is back in the A's. It was not as good. 
my least favorite of any of the books. I'm going right about there. And then The Crippled God is easy, the best book I've ever read. I just love Malaz and Book of the Fallen. And I, I did a video a while back on all the reasons I love Malaz and Book of the Fallen and trying to make it a little more easy for people to get into because it's very intimidating. Uh, but this ending is just perfect. It's the perfect book uh, in every single regard. And I will probably feel that way till the day I die, but I hope I don't. I hope I finally get something that I like more. Um, then we have another series. So Molassin's broken up into a lot of different series. You have the 10 book series that most people know about, and then you have a lot of other ones that most people don't know about. Um, there's a series called Carcanus um, that is like thousands of years prequel that tells the story of you know, a bunch of the characters that are kind of gods now, but like back in the day. I liked it a lot, but didn't just love it. And so it's going there. And I really didn't like Fall of Light, uh, the follow-up book to it. I, I'm going to put it into the top of the Ds. It's just like so overly philosophical and just like too much. And I feel bad, but it's where it is. Then you have Return of the Crimson Guard. This is a book in Malazan, but not written by Steven Erickson, the main author. This is written by uh, Ian C. Esselmont, the other author. Um, they kind of split off and did different books, and uh, this is an awesome book. Uh, I think this is even better than some of the other books. Um, not a lot of them, though. It's going right about there. Then we have Stonewielder. Um, which I thought was like an A. Then Orb, Scepter, Throne, which is aws just awesome. I didn't like it as much as I liked Crimson Guard, but I liked it a lot. Goes right about there. <laughs> Knight of Knives, I thought was just okay. Uh, near the bottom of the Bs. It's the first book that Ian C.S. Mott wrote. I read it out of order because you don't need to read that one in order, and I heard bad things about it, and I didn't want to be you know, looking negatively on an author with my first book from them. Um, and then Of Blood and Bone, one of the worst Malazan books. It was hard to hard for me to get through. Um, and then we bounced back with a sale, back in, the, back in the A's, right about there. Just fun, fun, fun stuff. Um, and then back to a Steven Erickson book. This is a book that takes place after uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen, um, a lot of people have this book in the S's that love Malazan. I don't. I'm going to put it in the A's right around Garden to the Moon. Um, we're, we have more Malazan to go. Um, then we're back to Ian C. Esamont, his kind of prequel story he did, which is not thousands of years. It's like a hundred years or less uh, before Malazan Book of the Fallen. Uh, Dancer's Lament is a great intro to this story. I'm going to put it kind of in the higher end of the A's. Then we have Dead House Landing, which I thought was just wonderful, and an S-tier book. Down about there. Um, then we are going to go to Kellen Bed's Reach, and I don't really remember whether I like this one more or less than Dead House Landing, so we're going to go right about the same. Followed by Forge of the High Mage, which I read this year, and it was good, not incredible, and we're going to go down here near the, bo near the bottom of the A's. Um... A few more Malazan books to go. Um, there's this little series that not a lot of people have read car called The Tales of Botchelain and Corbel Brooch, following these two characters, three really, because they have this uh, manservant uh, called Emancipor Reese, I think. Uh, but these are just like these awesome necromancers that are hilarious. Uh, the first book is not great, though. I'm going to put it, it's just not that great. I'm going to put it down in the seas. I kept going, though, and I'm really glad I did because I thought the Lisa Laughter's End is just hilarious and definitely an S-tier book. Um, it's just awesome. Uh, and then The Worms of Bleermouth, which I thought was maybe even better. Um, and I'm doing the ranking, so I'm going to say it is better. Uh, and then we got The Crackbot Trail, and I didn't like it at all. Um, so we're right about there. Then we got back on track with The Healthy Dead. I thought it was a good, good A-tier book. Really funny. And then The Fiends of Nightmaria, which I thought was not as good. So we're in the kind of the middle of the A's. And we are done with Malazan. And I think we're about over... We're well over halfway into this video. And this video has been going on for a long time now. So almost an hour. So this is a long video. 
All right, let's drink a little bit. You can do this, Matt. All right. Oh, that's a lot of books left. All right, the Dragon Bone Chair. I can't believe I did this. Um, is a D. I didn't like it. Man, I wish I did. Um, I DNF'd it, actually. And it just... I didn't like it. I It was so boring. I, I don't know what people like about it. And that's by Tad Williams. So now let's get back on track with some Brandon Sanderson. Is this the first Sanderson book that I've written in here? Um, this is Mistborn. And this is going to be an S. I love the first Mistborn book. Um, this one drops over time. All these books do. But... Where are you? I loved it. I still think about it really positively. So you're going to go about there. Then after that, we have the Well of Ascension, which I thought was a drop off of that one. It's going to be in the A's. Right about there. And then the Hero of Ages, which I thought is the best of the group. Just a wonderful ending. And it's going to be up here. I just think about it all the time. Um, and then, so Mistborn is a trilogy. And it's called Era One. There's going to end up being four eras, where the first one is a classic old school high fantasy. The next one is this kind of like Western feel to it. The next one after that's going to be more modern day. And the last one's going to be in the future, like space travel. So this is kind of the old Western one. And I didn't really love it. I thought the Alo of Law was not great. It's going to be a high C. Um, I thought the next two were, you know, weaker B books. Um, so kind of down here. I just, they, they just didn't have that feel of the original um, eras to me, of, of the first era to me. And I like more high fantasy, so that's probably my bias. But I thought the Lost Metal was atrocious. Um, really, really, really bad. And it just ruined a lot of the Cosmere for me because of some of the decisions that were made. And I just, at no point did I get enjoyment out of that book. All right. Then we have Mistland. This is uh, a series with the first book being Eleventh Cycle by Kian Ardalon. Um, I, I love this book. Um, it's going to be in the S's. Not crazy high up the S's, but a good book nonetheless. Um, I read this this year. Then we have three books um, in the Mother of Learning series. Um, there are three arcs to the series. I think they call the fourth book Arc 4. But when they were first coming out, the third arc is just very, very, very long. And that's how I read it. So I'm going to rank it only three books. Uh, it's a time jump story. Um, kind of think of like Groundhog's Day, but with magic. And the first book, I'm going to put in the A's. The next book, I'm going to put up in the S's. I really liked the next book. It's just a really fun experience. And the final book, I'm going to put just a little bit better. All right, now we're going to Murderbot, uh, everyone's favorite robot uh, by Martha Wells. This is a very short series uh, in terms of like how long each book is. They're almost novellas, but they cost like a full size book, which is crazy. I, I don't know why people pay so much for these books. I got them at the library, which is why I did it. Uh, maybe that's why everybody's doing it. Uh, and these books are just hugely popular. I really like the first one. It's going to be lower on the A's. And I really like the second one. But it was kind of a carbon copy of the first one. So it's going to be near the bottom. And then the next one is kind of a carbon copy of those two. Uh, so it goes in the B's. It just It's like, what are you doing, Martha? You're just writing the same book over again. And then Exit Strategy is just kind of doing the same thing. And I like it in less and less and less. Um, but the Network Effect finally did something new. And it was my favorite of the Murderbot stories. And if I can find where I put the first Murderbot story, I would uh, be able to make sure that I had it above it. It's right about here. Uh, it's a full-length novel, uh, like four or 500 pages. It gave depth to it. It put Murderbot in a new direction. I just had a good time. But then Fugitive Telemetry. It just did the same thing as the others, but not as good. I don't like Murderbot anymore. I'm over it. Uh, didn't hate it as much as some of the others. So you go to the top of the Ds, but D nonetheless. Uh, all right, Nevernight. This is uh, uh, the first series by Jay Kristoff. So I told you earlier that I loved Empire of the Vampire, and I could not have felt more differently about this one. Uh, it's a D, and I hated it. 
<laughs> it's going to go further. I hated it so much. You're down here, Jay. It's really bad. Okay. The Way of Shadows. This is the Night Angel series. I think this is Brent Weeks. Um, and again, I hated it. I, I, I People think I hate a lot of books, and I do, but like, look at this spread. I feel like I like more books than I hate. Okay. To the Poppy War. This is by R.F. Kuang. Very, very, very popular series. Um... And I thought the first one was delightful. I really liked the first one. It's a bottom of the S of the A's. I thought the next one was quite bad. Uh, it's near the bottom of the C's. And I thought the last one was absolutely atrocious. Uh, and you're going to be down near the bottom of the D's. I just, I hate it. And I, I, I just hate the characters by this point. And at no point was I having fun with that book. I have an alarm going off. We're good. We're good, everybody. I got more time. All right, let's go a little faster because I've been doing this for a long time. The Power Mage by somebody. Brian McClellan? Um, this is a great series. I thought the series reminds me a lot of the first law. If you like the first law, I think you're going to like this. Um, but it's got this like flintlock fantasy thing to it where it's like gunpowder age. But it's good. I'm going to put the first one higher up in the A's. I thought it was awesome. Um, the Crimson Campaign, I thought was even better. Right about there. And then the Autumn Republic, I, I just feel like it's right around the Crimson Campaign, but a little bit higher. And it's right there. Good, good, good trilogy. Um, followed by another trilogy in the same universe in a different continent that I didn't like as much, but I thought it was good. So these books were kind of like in the A's somewhere. Let's just pick a spot because I... I'm tired. Um, but yeah, they're right about there. I'm going to put those right next to each other. But I thought the last one was weak. I thought the ending was quite meh. And I just kind of had to push myself to finish it. So we're going right there. Okay. Now let's go to four Red Rising books by Pierce Brown. Is that his name? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. The first Red Rising book I thought was okay. It was a B. The next one I thought was better. It's a bottom of the A's. And the final one I thought was better than that, but not incredible, like bottom of the A's. Uh, now, I find this series to be overrated because people oftentimes have this book as a, one of their favorite series they've ever read. And I just thought it was good. Um, but Iron Gold, so the series is like a trilogy and then it kind of continues the story. And I did not love it. Um, I'm going to put it kind of in the middle of the seas. It's just like, why did you write this book? And now I'm told that there's a good reason for it. And the next book, I think it's called Dark Age. It's wonderful. I have committed to read it eventually, but just not now. Okay, The Three-Body Problem. One of the most recent books that I've read on this list. This is another sci-fi book. Um, it was good. I liked the thought of it. The execution, not as much. So you're going into the middle of the bees. All right. Rift War. Um, this is by a guy. Um, what's his name? Feist. Raymond E. Feist. Um, and I thought it was great. I really, really, really love this. It's just classic fantasy that is just pulled off in a great way. Um, and so you're going to be in the S's. I thought the follow-up to that, Magician master so the first one's magician apprentice the next one's magician master i thought was a good a um and i thought silverthorn was not as good as those but a you know a good a ultimately i really like the series and i can't wait to kind of keep going with it uh do i i can't have it that high it's got to be like a like a drop lower okay now we got a lot of Raira books. This is my Michael J. Sullivan. I read a ton of these things. Um, and I'm not going to talk about each one. I'm just going to kind of place them. But I really like the series. Um, th I think the first is Raira Revelations, which is the first six books. They're rather short. Um, I think The Crown Conspiracy is kind of in the middle of the A's. I think Avon Partha was better. It's going to be a little bit higher. 
Um, I thought that Nifron Rising was a step down. It's kind of forgettable, but fun. I thought that the Emerald Storm kind of brought it back. It wasn't as good as the initial books, but I thought it was good. Um, I think Wintertide was really similar to my thoughts on the Emerald Storm. And I thought Persepolis was the best of the bunch and a pretty high tier A book. I thought the ending was just absolutely delightful. Um, then we have a series called Raira Chronicles, I think. And it tells the story of the main two characters and kind of how they met and these adventures they went on. I thought they're a big step down. Not a big. I thought they're a step down from the other ones. Kind of overall like a B tier. And so the first one, I am going to give a B tier score. I thought the Rose and the Thorn is the only that I'm going to put in the A's, but not high up in the A's. I think that the death of Gulath, Dulgath, Dulgath, um, is going to be down in the B's. Right about there. Uh, where? Probably lower. Probably right about there. And I thought Winter's Daughter is, you know, kind of just like that one. Right about there. Um, and then we got this other series that tells the story uh, in Rhaera thousands of years before. Kind of like the mythology to the land. And I thought the first book was incredible. Uh, my favorite Rhaera book by a long shot. I thought it's an S, not high up in the S's, but a good S book. I thought Age of Swords did a lot of the things from it, but it kind of was a step down from the other ones. Um, but I still like the vibe to it. I'm going to put you right around Avampartha. Um, Age of War, I thought was another step down by a whole grade. It's just like they're getting worse and worse. I thought Age of Legend did the same thing. I think it's in the seas. I think Age of Death got even worse. And then I thought Age of Empire kind of brought it back a little bit, but not incredibly. And I thought it was a B. Okay. Then the last book by Michael J. Sullivan is a series that's told in between the main Raira books and this old series, and I hated it. Um, well, I'll say I didn't like it, and I'm going to put it right around the, there. All right, now we've got a lot of Realm of the Elderlings books. Um, quite a lot of them, like a whole row of them. Let's fly through them, shall we? Um, I think that Assassin's Apprentice is a great intro to the series and a lower tier S book. I think that Royal Assassin is better than that book in virtually every way and is a really, really fun read. Fun by, and by fun I mean really sad, but good stuff. I thought Assassin's Quest was worse than those by a lot. Uh, boring in a lot of ways. I thought Ship of Magic was this new trilogy. So the first trilogy is called Farseer. <coughs> the second trilogy is called Live Ship Traders. And I thought Live Ship Traders is one of the best trilogies I've ever read. Um, Ship of Magic is a magical book and it's going right there. I think that the next one is The Mad Ship. And I think The Mad Ship is just a hair better. And I think Ship of Destiny is one of the best books that I've ever read. And it's gonna be hard for me to place this because I love all these books. But I'm going to move it right here. Then we go on to a series called... What? What's the series called? The Tawny Man. Um, I loved the first book. And, you know, I sound like a hypocrite, but I love how slow it was. I love the slow build. Um, but it's just... The, the way the characters interacted with each other, I thought was wonderful. Um, and it's going to be kind of... In the S's. Uh, Golden Fool, I thought, was a step down from that. It just kind of was a weird middle place where it didn't have its own story. It left on a weird cliffhanger, and I hate that. And I thought Fool's Fate was absolutely wonderful. I thought Fool's Fate was not in the Ship of Magic realm, but not a lot below it either. Uh, just really fun. Then we have this series called The, uh, the Rainwild Chronicles. I kind of like a YA story. I don't love it. I'm going to put the first one lower on the A's. Um, I'm going to put the next one in the D category. I just really dislike it. Uh, I'm going to put City of Dragons back up there into the A's. I thought it was wonderful. 
and I thought Blood of Dragons was even better, and it was kind of lower on the S's. Um, then our final trilogy is Fits and the Fool, and I loved all these books a lot. I think the first one is going to go um, right around here, uh, right around Fool's Fate. I'm going to put the one after that. And as I look back, I think I liked it a little bit less than that one, but not a lot. And then the final one I thought was absolutely amazing. And I'm going to have it higher than those, but not right about there. I feel like that's I can live with that. Okay. Now another Sanderson book. We've got Tress of the Emerald Sea. This is the first in the Secret Projects by Brandon Sanderson. Um, and it looks like I bunched some Brandon Sanderson books together here. I think Trust the Emerald Sea was the first S I read this year. It was really good. I think the next one, The Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England, which is a horrific title, was a lower tier B. Enjoyable. Not great. I thought Yumi and the Nightmare Painter was just whatever. And then The Seas. Um, not a secret project book, but a standalone, a Launtress, I did not like. Um, and I'm going to put it right next to Yumi. And then Warbreaker, which I did like, is going to be kind of the middle of the bees. This is a standalone uh, and just a fun stuff. A fun stuff. Yeah, I'm really starting to lose it. Uh, Empire in Black and the Gold. This is Black and Gold. This is by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is in the Shadows of the Apt series. I just recently read this. I'm going to put it near the top of the A's. Uh, the Umbral Storm by Alec Hudson. This is part of the Shadow, the Sharded Few series. I thought this was a lower tier S book. I liked it a lot. Um, and I can't wait for the next one. It's a really fun progression fantasy, epic fantasy mix, which is cool. Um, then Half a King. Um, this is by Joe Abercrombie. I'm putting this in the B's. It was okay. The ending was great, um, but it felt YA, and I was like, why is Abercrombie writing this? And then I found out, oh, it's just a YA series. Uh, and then I couldn't even get through Half the World. It just did so many things in the wrong way, and it's going here, even below Dragonhaven. I hated it. Um... And both those have a big similarity where they're from authors that I absolutely love and series I love. Not series. Authors I love. Um, but just like I certainly don't love those books. Uh, all right. Then we have two books from the Siege series by K.J. Parker. There's R.J. Barker and K.J. Parker, which is criminal that they have names like that. Um, 16 Ways is wonderful. I'm going to move it pretty high up in the S's. I just, it's so fun. Right with Kings of the Wild. Um, I thought How to Rule an Empire and Get Away with It was somehow even better. Um, just so witty. And I'm reading, I just finished the third one, but I um, haven't put out a review yet, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that on here. Um, okay, Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. We have five books here, six books, uh, four in the main series and two novellas. Um, let's start with the main books. The Way of Kings, I thought is awesome. That got me back into fantasy again after... Uh, Game of Thrones. This is kind of the start to my newest fantasy journey. I love Way of Kings um, more than I should. I think it's going really high. I think this is a good stopping point for it. Uh, Words of the Radiance is even better. Uh, where do I put it? Right about there. Oathbringer is like the best A book I've read. Um, and then... I don't think this is a popular opinion, but Rhythm of the War, I found to be an enjoyable S-tier book. Better than Oathbringer. Okay. Then the novellas. I thought that Edge Answer was good to, good to meh. So top of the C's, bottom of the B's. Let's go bottom of the B's. No, let's go top of the C's. Uh, I thought Dawn Shard was enjoyable. A little better than that. It was like, eh, but... I had a good time here in the bees. And we're done with Sanderson, I think, until we get to Wheel of Time. Okay, so we're down to Christopher Rocchio. This is a sci-fantasy series, so sci-fi and fantasy combined. Um, 
The first is Empire of Silence. This is in the Sun Eater series. I, this guy is amazing. I think Emperor's Empire of Silence is going to be pretty high up there. Right around here. I think the next one is... This is a novella, The Lesser Dark. It's going to be kind of lower on the A's. Then back to the main series with The Lesser Devil is awesome. I'm going to move this one pretty high up in the S's. Uh, right about there. Then the Howling... No, then Queen Among Ashes. This is the only novella I've ever given an S grade, but I'm going to move you kind of right near the bottom of it. Just really awesome stuff. All right, we're moving along. Um, okay, The Sword of Kaigen or Kagan or whatever you want to say by M.L. Wang. I read this recently. Is it Buddy Read? Lower A. Um, the first binding. Um, uh, where am I going to put you? Somewhere right about here. The worst book I've ever read. <laughs> it's, it's a it's just pure plagiarism off of uh, uh, um, which one? Uh, Rothfuss, the first Rothfuss book. Uh, it's it's horrific. Not only is it plagiarism, it's just bad. Um, and I just it's the only zero star I've ever given. Um, then His Majesty's Dragon. This is the first book in the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik. Um, it's a lower B. Didn't love it. It was, it was okay. Um, then The Tide Child is the series by R. J. Barker. Um, the first is The Bone Ships. All of these are S tier. I thought the Bone Ships is just really enjoyable. Put you right here smack dab in the middle of the S's. I think that Call of the Bone Ships is a good amount better. I just kind of a perfect book in a lot of ways. Um, I Wait. That was Call of the Bone Ships. No. I have two Call of the Bone Ships. Okay. I'm going to say this is Bone Ships Wake right here. Let's call, pretend that's Bone Ships Wake. Call of the Bone Ships is the worst of the group, but still an S, and it's down here. Okay, I messed up. Now we're at Tagana. This is by Guy Garvey K, the only Guy Garvey K book I've ever read, and I hated it. Uh, you're going to go in the Ds, down about there. Um, to Ride Hell's Chasm. This is by Janny Wirtz. This is a Patreon pick recently, and I had a good time. It's in the middle of the A's. The Trials of Ashmount by John Palladino. I'm going to put this in the A's. Kind of lower in the A's. It was fun. The Wandering Inn by Pirate Abba. This is becoming one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, like top five. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, the first book is one of the weakest of the group, though, so you're going to be lower on the S's. I thought the next one was better. Probably right about there. I thought the next one was even better than that. And you're going to be pretty high up now. I thought the next one was a good step down from that. It had a lot of problems with it. It's going to be high up in the A's. And the most recent one that I've read, The Last Light, is the best of the bunch. And it's got to be up... Man, right about there. It's awesome. Okay, then The Wolf by Leo Carew. This is part of the Under the Northern Sky series. I thought this first book was just incredible. Um, right about there. The next one, The Spider, I recently read this. It's going to be high up in the A's. Then Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. This is a standalone, a little novella-ish book. Low on the B's. Um, the Iron Prince by two authors, I think. Um, Bryce O'Connor, I think, and someone else. I could have botched that. Um Awesome progression fantasy story. I think I gave it a four and a half. So it should be right about here. Okay, we're almost done. The Wheel of Time. One of my favorite series. I thought The Eye of the World was a low tier A. I thought The Great Hunt was a mid tier A. 
I thought the Dragon Reborn was a low t or, uh, lower tier S. I think the Shadow Rising is right there with it. I think the Fires of Heaven is a better than those. I think Lord of Chaos is kind of back in that mix with the others. You know, right in there. Crown of Swords, I found to be a step down. It's going to be in the A's higher up. The Path of Daggers, I loved. It's going to be in here in the S's. Winter's Heart, which is the beginning of the slog, what everybody says is horrible, but I kind of liked it. It's mid A's. Um, Crossroads of Twilight. I think a lot of people say this is the worst book of the bunch. It's not good. Not great. It's like bottom of the B's. New Spring, which is a short little novella prequel book, but you're supposed to read it right about here, which is why I have it here. It was not amazing. You're lower on the C's. But then Knife of Dreams, we're back to amazing. I thought Knife of Dreams was awesome. And then I thought the next three are even better than that. I thought they're like right about there. I thought these are the ones written by Sanderson. I just liked them more and more as I went along. I like Robert Jordan, but I like the way that Sanderson wrote this series and he just kind of tightened things up a little bit. And we're down to the final three books. Easy. We're almost done. The Witcher. The Last Wish. This is like the prequel series. I thought it was like a mid-A. I thought Blood of Elves, the first of the real series. I thought it was like a lower B. And the final book, Age of Assassins, is a C. And we're done. Uh, and let's go down the list so you can see it. I'll go nice and slow. So these are all the S's. Big, huge chunk, like a full screen worth. Um, then we get the A's. A little less, almost a full screen worth. The B's, only four rows. C's, a little over two rows, and D's, two rows. So it's really, you know, a a S's had the most, then A's, then B's, then C's, and D's. No, yes, that's true. All right, I'm losing it. All right, and that was easy. That was only, how long was this video? Uh, an hour and a half? Boom. Next year will be even worse. I look forward to that. Well, thanks everybody for sticking with this. I appreciate you giving me your time. And as always, happy reading to you.